In the first video, I walked you through my pocketable minimalist setup for street photography, and I began by showing you the camera that I use, the Ricoh GR3, and why it's right for me. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I transfer the images across to my phone, and do all the editing start to finish on my phone, do the sharing as well, and even back up the images that I've edited. Let me just say up front that I think there's this perception out there that if you edit up your images on your phone, you're going to lose a lot of detail and a lot of information. Now, there are some apps out there that do downsize your images, but I would just avoid them altogether. Every app I'm gonna show you today keeps your images at full resolution with all the details intact. So much so that I put out a book of photography every year. Almost all the images in there were edited on my phone, and I've even printed those images up to A1. So let's jump in. So on a normal shooting day, at some point I'll find a coffee shop and sit down, I'll fire up the camera, go into menu, and I will find my Wi-Fi settings, turn on my Wi-Fi on the actual camera, and then I will connect to the camera using the phone and the Wi-Fi. And then I just go into my photography apps here and I'm gonna to go to Image Sync, which is the Ricoh app. Take a second to load up. And then you'll see all the images that are sitting on there on your camera. And you can just click one at a time, it'll open up, and you can hit the download button and it'll bring it into your gallery. And then they're on your phone. So once you've got the selection of images that you wanna edit in your gallery, and these are raw files, by the way, we're editing raw files with these apps, then we can start to go to work. And the phone, by the way, I like to use this old uh, Samsung Note 9, just because it's got a bit of a bigger screen. And it's got this stylus, which is a little bit nerdy in real life and everyday use, but for editing photos, it's really useful. So if I go to my photography apps here, and I'm gonna go to Lightroom Mobile. This is the app that I use to do most of my editing. And I don't wanna to spend too long on any image in here. I feel like if I spend too long, it's probably not that good an image in the first place. And I'm, I'm just trying to rescue a bad image with editing. So um, let's pick, let's take this uh, image here. So this is just like a W, you can see there's some nice hard light. This is in an area in the West End. I can pull up my exposure. I can see this raw file has got a ton of info in it, but I exposed it sort of where I wanted it anyway. So the first thing I usually like to do is just check my crop. So a little bit of a twist and a rotate, and uh, that looks pretty good. I don't really want to crop in any. I like all the negative space there. And this is going to be black and white. There's no real color information in this image that makes it um, scream that it should be in color. So let's just straight away go to color here and I'm going to change it to black and white. And I've got um, videos, by the way, on how to edit in color and in black and white. So I'm not going to go too in depth with it. If you want to do that, go and hit those videos individually. A nice little thing to do is if you hit mix here, you can actually dial in the separate color values. So there's often blues in the shadows. Let's see what the yellows will do. You can see the yellows on the highlights there. If I bring that up a little bit, that creates a bit of contrast, but it's sort of more intuitive contrast using the colors in the image. If I come across here to exposure, um, I don't usually touch contrast. Instead, I pull my contrast in custom using highlights and shadows. So maybe my highlights up a touch, shadows down a little bit. I want to bring my black point down to sort of really crunch the black in those shadows so we can't see anything. I'm going to leave the white point where it is. And when I've got my contrast sort of where I want it to be, I'm going to go to curves and I'm going to just create a little contrast curve here after I've sort of baked in kind of what I want. And that to me looks fairly good. If you hold your finger on the image, you can see a before and after. Nice clean image as it is. Looking at it, I might want to just give a little tuck from the left on that crop, just a little bit. So you've got a nice bit of negative space here, nice little triangle at the top and this shape coming out the shadows, which is quite cool. And that's as simple as I keep it. I really don't do very much more. The only other thing I might do is if the image is a little flat, I might come across to this little icon here I might do a little touch of clarity, but honestly, it's one of those things where if you start sliding it around too much, it looks ridiculous. So like less is more definitely, but it just adds that little bit of edge contrast to your stuff as well. So if I hold my finger on and off, that's it, that's done. That's all I would do to that image. Come to the top here, hit this little share icon and go save to device. And that's gonna export that photo that we've just created um, to my gallery where I've just taken it from. This may take a moment, it says, so I'm just gonna let it spin away. And this now is exporting as a JPEG, but it's the same resolution JPEG um, as the raw file I brought in. So I'm not losing resolution. Yes, I am converting it from raw file to JPEG. Okay, let's do one more just while we're in Lightroom. And by the way, there are other options from Lightroom. I used to use an app that I absolutely loved on uh, iOS, on, on an iPhone 
called Darkroom. And I really recommend taking a look at Darkroom because this stage and the next stage, you can actually do both stages within Darkroom and it's such a beautiful, clean, intuitive app to use. So maybe check that out. I'll leave a link down to these apps below. But if you're on iPhone, I would definitely check that out and think of it as an option. Um, Lightroom has the added benefit. I'm gonna look at this image in a second, but Lightroom has the added benefit of anything I edit in here, because I've got the photographer's package, when I get home, um, all my Adobe Cloud and everything, I have Lightroom CC on my computer at home. And that means that anything I've done in my app here, any image I've included or loaded up in here, and any edits I've made are synced to Lightroom CC. So if I'm not quite sure of what I was seeing on my phone screen, I can pull it up on the big screen later just by loading up CC and everything is there. So the fact that this mobile app syncs with a desktop app like that and I can see it um, in multiple formats is really, really useful. So this was just a cross I saw lying on the ground in a graveyard, which I thought was quite nice. Um, I'm not gonna do any cropping on this. This is exactly where I wanted it to be. Uh, let's play with some um, of my contrast. Again, the, the exposure is exactly where I want it to be. I've shot it in manual. I might just kick up the, the highlights here and darken down the shadows. And let's have a look at my colors here. Next, next one along. And I might wanna boost the vibrancy just a little bit. It's gonna make the colors pop a little bit. And I don't like green in my images that much. So what I do with grass often is I select my, actually, let me go back one. So what I've done here is click this little mix button at the top. And now I can do my hue saturation luminance on each of my individual colors. So with my green selected, I'm gonna slide it to the left here. And that's gonna take my green more to yellow and just a little bit and then desaturate just a touch. And that just takes down some of that harsh greenness because personally I don't like a lot of heavy green in my images. And then I'm gonna take the whole saturation just down just a touch. And now if I come back here to my light and go to my curves, I'm just gonna dial my contrast in and that looks Bring that highlight down a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. And the top uh, over here in this corner is looking a little bright, some of those flowers. So what I might do is just right the way along to the left here, hit this little um, circle here. And if I go plus, I'm gonna select the gradient tool. I'm just gonna drag a gradient across like that, across the top, go to light. And I'm just where I've selected, where that red mask is, I'm just gonna start to dial the exposure back a little bit and just the highlights back a little bit, which just sort of creates as if it's coming out of deeper shadow, that's all I'm doing. And now those highlights are looking a little hot for me on the cross, so I'm gonna bring those back down a touch. And that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna leave it there, I'm not gonna add clarity or anything because there's a lot of busy detail in this. So if I hold my finger on and off, you can see just a subtle little edit. I wanna get as much in camera as possible and these are just little tweaks at the end. So I'm gonna go to my save, Icon at the top in my share icon, go save to device. Again, it's preparing to export. It's just gonna process all that, uh, take those edits I've made, add them to the raw file, pull them into a JPEG, full resolution, uh, and then it's gonna pull that into my gallery. Successful and done. Next thing I'm gonna do is come up here to my photography folder again, and I'm gonna go to this app called Polar. A uh, great little app, does a bit of everything. I only use it really for one thing though, and that is to add a border. Now. Uh, if I go to Lightroom here, open images Lightroom, it's gonna show me the images that I brought in uh, or exported from Lightroom. So this is the last image I edited in Lightroom. So I should probably explain, the reason I add a border is because when you upload to something like Instagram, it crops. It won't let you have that three by two aspect ratio. It kind of squashes it down to sort of a more four by five or something like that. And I want the three by two because that's how I compose the image. So by adding a white border around it as a square, I can upload it natively and I can have my aspect ratio in the center of that border kept the same unaltered. Because I don't want to mess up my crop and the way I composed it. So the way that I do it is, if I go to all tools down here at the bottom, and lots of people, this is literally the most asked question I get on Instagram is how do you add borders? Uh, and I come here to border, I go to original aspect ratio and do drop down, I go to square. It's got white around the outside. You can actually change the color if you want to, but I don't want to. And then I just slide this to two there. So that's done and hit tick. And then it's fine. Now I've got my 
uh, border around the outside. And even if I upload this as a square to Instagram, my three by two aspect ratio is safe in the center of that and it's not gonna mess it up. Some people don't like it because on dark themes, it doesn't look as good. Personally, it doesn't bother me. It just feels sort of like the old Polaroids with a white border around. It doesn't bother me at all. I think it's good. And the only other thing I might do is sometimes when you add an image on a white border, you can feel like you've lost some of the contrast in your actual image when you've got that high contrast of deep blacks and your black and white and the white border itself. So what I might do is go to adjustments and come across here to curves again and I might just kick a little bit just by creating a shallow S curve, bring a little bit of contrast back into the image after I've added the border. I often find I need that little bit of extra um, just to bring it all together. So tick and then again I can just go to my save icon at the top, save new photo and it's going to save that again to my gallery. So now I've got versions of this. I've got the raw file sitting there. I've got the version I kicked out of Lightroom, which is the high res JPEG. And I've got this version with the actual border on it. Let's just do it with the other image that I did as well. So we bring in this little cross I found on the ground. Go all tools, border. I'm going to go original aspect ratio and I'm going to go square. I'm going to dial this across until I get two. And I just like to keep it uniform across. I know it's two for me, so I know everything will look exactly the same. And then I'm going to go to adjustments and I've got my curve and I'm going to pull in my curve just to bring that contrast back so that it looks good against the white background. If you don't want polar, you don't want to use polar, uh, other options are, like I said, if you use Darkroom on um, iPhone, you can do the border within Darkroom as well as all the stuff I did in Lightroom, which is great. Or you can use an app called Whitegram, which just does the border stuff for you really, really simply. So final little bit, if I go save new photo at the top here, that's going to now save this version with the border. Now I would normally post to Instagram. I'm not going to go through Instagram with you. You all know how to use it. There's loads of videos out there. I've got a video myself on how I use Instagram, but I'm just making sure of titling something, writing a little description, putting some hashtags and just posting it natively. I don't do any extra editing now because I've done all the editing custom in here. So it's literally just to post. And the only other thing to tell you, I think, which I use, which is very, very helpful if I come back to my photographer's folder is how I back up images. So I've got Amazon photos on here and because I have Amazon Prime, they do this thing where if you download Amazon photos as an app, you have unlimited storage for any number of images you like. Um, I think if you don't have Amazon Prime, you get five gigs free, which is still plenty. And all you need to do to use this is just click on Amazon Photos. It loads it up and it searches for any image that you haven't updated or uploaded here. And it automatically uploads anything that hasn't been backed up. And I can access these Amazon Photos from my desktop. I can download them again. It's a great way to make sure that everything I'm doing on my phone, the raw file, and the JPEG that came out of Lightroom and the one with the border that I ended up posted are all backed up and ready so I can access them anytime by date using Amazon Photos. So those are the apps that I use and literally I will spend maybe a minute on each photograph, just quick 30 seconds tweaking in Lightroom like I did, add the border in Polar and I will then uh, push it out onto Instagram and post and I love the freedom of being able to shoot, edit and post that fast. And like I said, just using the Amazon photos just to back everything up and make sure everything is safe. So I hope that's helped you and given you some ideas about editing your images on the go. The only thing that might differ slightly is how you transfer your images from your camera to your phone, but there's always a way, just do a bit of research. And of course, if you've been shooting on your phone anyway, your images are already on here. And yes, I know a lot of you have been asking me to do something on mobile photography specifically. It is on the list and it is coming. I have to say that I've really fallen in love with the freedom of shooting with this pocketable little setup. And far from seeing any quality drop, I'm seeing myself become a better photographer for the whole time for how easy this is to use and how much it makes me shoot. Having these in my pocket with me wherever I go just means I take way more photographs. And as I said in the previous video, that is the only way to get better as a photographer is to take as many photographs as you possibly can, look back at them, review them, learn from them and get better. Any change comes incrementally and in photography, those increments are one shot at a time. So I hope you've enjoyed these two videos. And if you missed the first video where I talk about the benefits of shooting with such a pocketable camera it's sitting there waiting for you but what I would say to you is if you find your gear as a hindrance or you're using it as an excuse not to get out the door and shoot because you have to pack a bag or your camera's heavy maybe it's time to think about stripping everything down simplifying so you can move lightly and shoot a lot more because shooting a lot more is the only route to becoming a better photographer